it's, it's not like what we have in Nigeria. I just stand at the bus stop, any bus stop, and hear Ojeleba, Yanapaja, Oshoji. There is nothing like that. <laughs> there is nothing like that. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. So welcome back on today's episode of the things I did in my first week of London in Canada. So, um, yes, so we hit 300 subscribers. Yay! Thank you all so much for your love. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your subscriptions. Thank you for sharing my videos. For those of you who have been sharing my videos, thank you so much for all your support so far on my channel. I love and appreciate you guys a lot and if you know you are watching this video <laughs> if you know you're watching this video if not subscribed you don't like please do that right now like right now hit the subscription button hit the like button and please share my videos okay because the information i'm giving out are things that i was looking for even before i came to canada and i felt it's good you know to share this information with you guys based off of my experiences so i would love and appreciate your support let's get to 500 subscribers guys yes so on today um on today's video we're going to be talking about the things i did first week i landed canada so i'm going to be telling you the things i did which is, which are very important and which you also need to do if you want to benefit fully from this video you need to see this video till the end of it to gain maximally from everything i'm going to tell you in this video yes so i also want to point out that i have i actually made a video about my first week in canada but for some reasons i deleted the video so that is why i'm making another one a more detailed information of all the things i did in my first week of canada of landing in canada which you also might want to do or which you you should know what and what things to do when you, you land canada so to get started let's talk about the first things i'm going to the first things i did rather and like i always say in my video i don't want this video to be too long i don't want to bore you guys so yeah let's get started so the first thing i did so I'm going to be looking at my jottings down here. I jotted some points down. So if you see me looking on, looking this way, just now taking a peep at my jotter. Okay, good. So the first thing I did was getting my... The first thing I did when I landed Canada was getting my social insurance number. So your social, social insurance number, SIN, is the unique number you're given once you land into Canada. So that is what you're going to be using for the rest of your stay in canada you need it for important documentations important things and you are not to give this number out to just anybody okay i think the only people who you meant to give this social insurance number to when required uh is the company you work with yeah they would need it for your pay slip and also um the bank if it's required yes so now to get your social insurance number for a newcomer who just landed into canada you want to go to service canada to get this done service canada so you go to service canada you provide them with your information so it's important you go with the document that brought you into canada and for me the document that brought me into canada was my study permit so i went along with my study permit and yeah my um social insurance number was given was given to me but uh, there is a but there um some people have it different some when they go into um when they go to get their social insurance number some will get it on the first day they you know the first day they go there like for me i landed i i went the next day i landed canada but it wasn't available then it wasn't ready then so i was asked to come back but some they were able to get it easily you know without having to go and come back so it varies so in case if you go and they check they say your number hasn't been been allocated yet don't get scared okay just be calm and ensure you give them your study permits all right your study permits as long as you 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 entered into canada with um, the study visa so just give them your study permit and before you know it within few minutes or thereabouts you'll be giving your um, social insurance number 
so that is for that now the second thing you want to do get done is opening a bank account it is very important to open a bank account here and it trust me it's really really easy to open a bank account here okay so what you need is your valid id card as a newcomer your international passport yes so you need your international passport and i think that's just it and they'll get information so you should open an a a, a a bank account so there are many banks here in um canada you might want to open with there is scotia bank there is um rb royal bank there is bank of montreal um there is also there are different banks so you can walk into any of the banks and you know tell them you want to open a bank account okay now another thing you want to get done is your sim card your sim card that is your phone sim card so to get a sim card here there are various networks here various networks just like you have back home in nigeria there are various um there are various brands okay so but there's something you need to note here if you are to get a sim card here there is a one-time fee now aside aside the amount you're going to be paying for your sim card like here you can you can get a sim card of 50 dollars 39 dollars you know depending on the um contract or the subscription so and depending on the amount of data you're getting okay so if you're looking to get much data the prices ranges the the, the, the prices varies okay then if you're also looking to get a you know a data with less um with less sorry a network with less data amount because you might be living in a place where there is wi-fi so you might not need to you know get one with too much um, data on your phone so as to reduce costs so but despite any one you get there is a one-time fee you will pay aside the money you're paying for that sim card for example let's say you're getting a sim card of 50 dollars in a month the amount is 50 dollars you have to pay a one-time fee of 60 dollars 60 dollars aside the 50 dollars so that is how it is done here so if you add your 50 dollars plus the 60 dollars one time fee that is 110 dollars and then you would also be charged 15 percent yes 15 percent um tax on it that would be 15 dollars i don't know if i'm making sense but anyways for me i was charged extra 15 dollars for the tax so now that will amount to 120 or 125 dollars now after the first month you don't need to pay that 60 dollars anymore so what you need to be paying is the 50 dollars i don't know if you guys get my explanation so i didn't understand this at first but you know going through the contract agreement the document i was given when i got my sim card and the email uh, and the email i was sent i got to understand that this is how it's done so the first time you're going to pay 120 something dollars the first time but subsequently you're going to pay the real amounts plus i guess plus the the tax yeah so that is how the sim card is done here now another document you also want to get done is your provincial id card so the province you you're going to be staying in the province you're going to be studying at where you filled in your um in your visa and your study permit that is going to be where you're studying you need to get the id card of that province this makes it easy for you to just go with your provincial id card instead of going along with all your documents as an international um, student or as an immigrant you want to go along with your provincial id card so instead of you going along with your international passport with your documents to prove whom you are and all of that you just need your provincial id card so to get your provincial id card done you want to go to access uh, okay so for me here in the province where i am nova scotia so if you're in nova scotia for those of you who are coming to nova scotia or who are already in nova scotia you want to get to access nova scotia okay that is where you are going to have your provincial id card done access nova scotia you don't need an appointment per se i didn't go with an appointment when i went there like i just did a walk-in they asked me what do i what am i there for i said i want to get my id card done they directed me and told me the documents I needed to present. So when you get there, so I want to tell you guys now the documents you need so you don't have to go and come back like I did. So for me, I actually went there twice and it was a bit distant from where I lived. 
and going by the public bus um it was more distant because you know the bus takes time to get to you know wherever you want to go to it's not like it's a private car or it's an uber mm -mm. so the bus takes time so i actually went twice this is because i didn't know the document i was supposed to present i didn't go with all of my documents so if you're not sure you want to go with all of your documents as well but for the sake of my own for, for the sake of this video and based off of my own experience i'm going to tell you guys the documents you need to go along with you when you're going to get your provincial id card done so you need your international passport that is your number one passport then you also need another id card that carries your name on it another id card that carries your name on it so with me i didn't have another id card that carried my name on it i only went in my international passport so i was required to have another id card that had my name on it so i went with the um with the ATM card of the bank I opened here in Canada. But so, now I'm going to tell you guys, some of their cards here, some of their AT cards, ATM cards here, doesn't have your name printed on it like we have back in Nigeria for some. So because mine doesn't have my name printed on it, okay? So for you, those of you who does not, you who your ID, your, um, your, um, atm card your canadian bank atm card does not have your name carried or um, written on it you can go with your nigerian um atm card if you have it with you okay but i would advise you carry your nigerian atm card along with you back from your you know from your home country because how do you want to survive before you get a job here so anyways so i went i wasn't with my nigerian atm card i i didn't carry it along with me to the nova scotia id card um, to the Nova Access Nova Scotia radar part on me. So what I did was I went back home. I went back home to pick my Nigerian ATM card because my Nigerian ATM card has my name written boldly and fully written on it. Okay. So I'm gonna be putting a clip on that here so you guys will see it. So I went back, I got my Nova Scotia um uh, my nigerian atm card and i went back because there was still time so i just want to tell you the times they operate they operate from you know 8 to 4 8 30 or 9 to 4 30 p.m yes because the guy that attended to me he was so nice and he told me okay if you can quickly go home i'm gonna reserve your slot for you and when you come i will attend to you okay and he was so nice that was what he did so it took me two hours to go and come back because like I mentioned, I went with a public bus. So going took a while, coming back also took a while. So within two hours and, you know, some minutes, I returned back. It was like, oh, you're back. I said, yes. So he was able to help me get it done. Okay. So you need two ID cards and your international passport and any other ID card bearing your name on it. Those are the two documents you need to apply for your provincial id card then the amount you need to pay for that provincial id card is 17 dollars seven cents that was what i paid 17 dollars and seven cents that was how much it cost but if you want an express entry sorry if you want an express um application that is if you want to receive your documents your id card within three to four working days that is express then you have to pay an additional 12 dollars i guess but with me i opted for the normal one and it's it takes 10 to 14 days before you know you get your documents so that was what i did so that is that now the fifth thing you want to get done with this cost for so far let's take a review of this cost getting your sim card getting your sin done rather getting your bank account done getting your sim card and getting your provincial id card now the fourth thing you want to get done is getting a bus pass so now this is for those who do not have a private car yet and those who you know for some reason they don't want to keep you know spending money on um taxi on uber and boat and all of that so you can get the bus pass for the province where you live okay it is very very important you get those because it will save you some costs as well and another thing you need to know is for you to use the bus you need to be able to navigate the bus routes you need to be able to navigate the bus routes the routes the bus gets to for example you're going somewhere you need to know the bus stop where you need to wait for the bus you need to know the bus number and you need to know the route the bus is taking if not 
you will get lost <laughs> but that's the truth if not you you you're gonna get lost like i got lost a couple of times so i'm gonna put a clip there for you see, guys for the past how many days now i've been missing my way because it's quite difficult to navigate you know how to get your boss your boss number and everything but so far so good i've been trying i've been trying to you know navigate and move around on my own without the aid of anyone so since yesterday and today i've i've, I've been doing it so I'm, I'm already figuring it out i can move i can do everything on my own now without anyone helping me so i'm proud of myself for that <laughs> i'm literally proud of myself that I'm able for me for a couple of times i got lost but with time i was able to you know navigate it so for you to be able to navigate your bus route what you need the only thing you need is your phone and your google map and then yeah your internet connection your data so you need your phone google map and data for you to be able to connect to the bus so it's, it's not like what we have in nigeria i just stand at the bus stop any bus stop there's nothing like that <laughs> There is nothing like that. And chances are that even if you stand beside someone and you ask them, oh, please, I'm going to so so place. They were like, they don't know the bus you're going to take. So if you don't know where you're going, I'm sorry, you're lost. You're lost. Yeah. So what you need to do is you use your Google map on your phone. You type the route. The, sorry, you type the direction where you're going to. And it's going to bring up um, the, the routes, the bus numbers the bus stops so each bus stops have a name and a number so you should want to cross and um, cross check with the name of the bus stop the number of the bus stop the number of the bus itself you're going to enter and the name of the area or the environment where the bus is going to for you to be able to know where you're going to it's not so difficult but you just need to you know you just need to be willing to know your way so i mean i was able to get it within a few times i i went out okay and now i can go out very well by myself without you know anyone taking me along or anything so you can also know your way around so that is what you need to know so i think i've covered all the things i did in my first week of being in canada so yes and there's another thing i'm going to talk to you guys about uh that's going to be on my next video anyways um should I tell me it's the culture shock or the things I noticed that, you know, are different from way back home? So anyways, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. And please, 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 please do not forget to like, do not forget to subscribe, do not forget to share these videos, okay? And trust me, I'm going to be bringing more information to you guys. Thank you all for watching to the end of this video. Bye!